<clears throat> Howdy, Jamie, how are you? Okay? I'm good, I'm good. Let me turn you up a little bit. It always turns down the volume as soon as I jump into Blab for some reason. It makes there it hard, to, hard to, to give you some I advice. I know, I can hear you just fine until I jump in and then it like drops the volume all the way down. Like, it's strange. Uh, yeah, so uh, so questions about job hunting. I, um, I've got 20 years in IT, um, uh, specifically web development, and uh, the last six and a half years doing, uh, doing SharePoint as an architect and as a product manager. Um, and, and I like that work. I want to do something more in that realm, um, not so much hands-on deep into, uh, into the code aspect of things, but, uh, but architecture and, and product management and driving what those, those requirements are to, um, to, deliver, uh, to deliver products to customers that, um, that really meets their needs. Um, I, on paper, I, I don't, I don't really have like business development or, um, you know, product owner, product management type, um, uh, credentials, but I have an aptitude for it. So the biggest struggle I have is trying to find the right job description, um, to apply for. And, uh, you know, I work my network. I have a lot of friends who know me and know, know what, know what I do, especially in the, um, uh, in the SharePoint game. Um, but, um, but there's just the struggle of trying to, to identify clearly where I am, which gives me the step to the next thing, uh, which is where I want to go. Thoughts? <laughs> so just to parrot it back to make sure I've got it. You're not quite there. You have a sense of where you want to get to. You're not mm -hmm. sure how to get from A to C. Right. Perfect. Uh, and, and that's right up my alley. So I'll right. simply say that you're smart to identify that you've got some skills or professional deficiencies that need to be remedied. Right. And, and, and the simplest way to figure out what you need to be doing next is through informational interviewing. Talking to people who are, are already in that seat that you want to be in. Phone, right. FaceTime, Skype. Find them on LinkedIn. Just simply reach out uh, and say, I'm not here to hit you up for a job, although if there was one forthcoming, I'd love to hear about it. But right. I just want to pick your brain for about 15 minutes. Can we schedule right. a time to speak? And then you treat it like a real informational interview. And you define clearly, this is where I am now. I'm sending you the resume to save you some time. I'm not trying to hit you up for a job, although if there was one forthcoming, I wouldn't mind hearing about it. Right. But I really just want to pick your brain. And normally that's going to be your best resource because you're going to be talking to hopefully not one person, but several people who are doing the kind of work you want to be doing. Right. Then from there, you take that back and start looking at some of the job ads through these new lenses. So you can see how it's languaged in the job ads, how it may be yeah. languaged on their LinkedIn profiles. So you can start thinking of, okay, what's the coursework? What are the steps that I need to take in order to get there, whether it's classes or a new job for a particular interim step in order to be able to qualify for that next step? Sometimes consulting is the right avenue because when you work in industry for a company, they want you to do that job and be the square peg in the square hole doing that particular task with limited options. Yeah, and I'm not a cog. I, I don't I do not do cog work well. You understand where I'm coming from, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the absolutely. side of it. Yeah. So, so that's the great probably thing the best that. avenue for you in order to make sure that you've got the right information. Now, the th key thing when you start talking to people is sometimes you get three different opinions. Yeah. So you have to take that. So you need to, to then the talk to more people. Right. And then you start noticing common patterns. The patterns is really where the conventional answer is going to be. So okay. once you have that mainstream answer, you can play with some of the fringes. So, for example, mm -hmm. and this doesn't apply to you, but hypothetically, if Three of them said masters, and one of them said, you know, masters is great. And one of them said, screw the masters, just go do this, you'll be fine. Well, I'm tempted to say go get a masters, but I want right. to talk to the other person a little bit more about 
why was it that, that you said this? Because a number of people said masters. I'm not trying to disagree, but what was your experience that got you without the, the masters? Right. So you always want to explore the outliers and don't necessarily dismiss them, but you're getting the mainstream answer of three people tell you one thing. Gotcha. No, that's great. I actually have an informational interview. Um, this next call is actually with a recruiter, but then the one after that is a friend of mine who is in close to the role that I want to be in. So, um, so I'm looking forward to talking with her as well. So it's good. To, but I need more. You're right. Yeah. And, and more than one, because one is just one person's experience. Right. Five and seeing the common patterns, then you got some data to work with. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. No, I appreciate that. I really do. Any I coaching really do. you need for the regular interview? No, I I don't have any problem with interviewing. <laughs> I can talk to people. I can tell them what my experience Simply say that in dealing with recruiters, you have to understand who you're dealing with. And okay. most of them are transactional. Okay. And they all blow smoke up your derriere. Mm -hmm. And if you notice the name of this uh, blab, it's no BS. Right. So you obviously have a very refined BS detector. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> it serves you well. But right. the trick is apparently you're seduced by these things that they say. Oh, we got this great job. You'll fit in like a glove. It's going to give you the career opportunity of a lifetime. But I mentioned it's going to pay a lot more money. And all that smoke that they blow. So yeah. I'm going to have to suggest to you a very simple technique. And that okay. is you know, three jokes in the recruiting business. Joke number one, how can you tell a job applicant is lying to you? Is lips are moving? Right. How can you tell a corporate recruiter is lying to you? Their lips are moving. And how can you tell a third-party recruiter is lying to you? <laughs> Their lips are moving. <laughs> right. So once you understand, and I'm going to be kind here and tie it all together, everyone's posturing for advantage. Yep. And the advantage is good real estate in the other's head. You, know, you think of them in a favorable way. So once you understand that, you understand that, that this is salesmanship on their part. Oh, fall in love with my words. Isn't my voice lovely? I'm just going to mesmerize you with all these words. And I've only been doing this for about an hour and a half, maybe hour 45 now. And... This is the script that I'm working from. And they tell me to say this crap. Right. So you don't, you, you don't know me. If you look at the profile, you'll see I've done search for more than 40 years. and I've coached for a long time as well. So I stopped doing the scams a long time ago uh, when it just became sufficiently distasteful. And from your vantage point, if you can tolerate the BS and not let it get through the filter until you get the follow-up from them where they're actually scheduling the interview, then right. you can take them a little bit more seriously. And even okay. then, you have to have a degree of, you know, of um, uh, holding back on them and in complete trust until you get in front of the client because then okay. you can compare what you were told with what the client is saying. Sure. That's when it's, you start to see how accurate they are. Okay. And that's, and, and I don't, and I don't feel like I'm being, you know, being wooed by their, by their, their pretty words. It's just, what's the, what's the route to get past them to the person who has the real answers? Cause I, I'll go and be, you know, me and, and talk to them and, you know, share them my story. And it's like, man, this is great. You know, and, and it's not, I like my story. I don't think it's, it's not a, it's not a false story. My, you know, I'm not lying because my lips are moving. Um, but I want that person to like me well enough to, um, to, to pass me on to the next thing so I can really get the answers to that. Um, but I'm not sure that that's been effective to this point. I've got a list of people that, oh yeah, I need to call back that recruiter. I need to follow up with that recruiter, that recruiter. And really they're not recruiters, they're screeners. They're people that have, that have screened me to, to the, and really all they, all they have done is, Okay, here's a guy who sent in this resume. Looks pretty good. Can he talk as though he actually did these things? If so, then we can say, yeah, these two things actually go together. There's some truth to this. Let me pass this story on. But I have a functional resume. 
And most of the places that I go, I've got to fill out the whole Taleo thing of all the things that I've done, um, as opposed to here's what here's what I here's what I build here's 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 what I bring, and it's not it's not fitting into that little cog in your machine. It's I can I can do cog work, you know, I can tweak these things and do those types of things around. Um, but I'm but I'm bringing more mindshare to it, and I and and I present that in my in my resume, but I don't know if it gets through the screener to the recruiter to the hiring manager, and and I and and I realize that the that the screener somebody I got to go through. What's the quickest pass through path through them to get to the hiring manager, or can I? How do I get directly to the hiring manager? Just skip the recruiter altogether. Uh, the answer is you have to find the job opening. Uh, and unless you're actively looking for these openings and networking to find the openings, the recruiter is going to be your path. Now, gotcha. the thing with how to work with recruiters is the easiest way to get the interview is to make sure that a six-year-old could understand how your background fits what they ostensibly are looking for. Okay. So pretend you've got a six-year-old. Matter of fact, it's a six-year-old with ADHD. And I've had I've had a couple of those. <laughs> I have one of them. So at the end of the day, you have to make the fit obvious. The texture is going to be in your character and how you communicate your character in the course of talking. Okay. And, and that's really natural and being true to yourself. So you obviously are someone who could string a few sentences together. And yeah, I like the I response to that one. Um, so you can string a few sentences together. And once you understand the game, as you actually do, the question is whether you're willing to play it with the recruiter mm -hmm. to demonstrate your fit so that they can say with conviction, yeah, you're, I'm going to submit you to the client. And your res and then you can respond with, do you think my resume is strong enough given the job description, which I haven't seen, obviously, or do you think I ought to tweak it a little bit? If they say tweak it, can I get a copy of the job description? At which point you have the magic there, and that, that way you can tailor your resume to what the client is looking for. Okay. I'm sure you have the discernment to understand the difference between just yeah. talking about and having a resume that talks about what you've done versus talking about what you've done that matters to the client. Right. And and most if you, they're going to just flip the same resume you send to everyone to every job, that doesn't work. Broken watch right. is right twice a day. Right. So. That's probably the simplest way to use the system to your advantage in order to manage the recruiter and sound like they're going to be your ally. But what you're doing is extracting what you need in order to get past them. Okay. So, okay. So that works, that works great for a, for a recruiter that calls me um, out of the blue. So then, and I don't know what the job description is. Um, and so I get that. I, I like that's that's great advice to ask them. You know, is my resume covered, or do you think it needs to be tweaked? Can I see the job description? Perfect. What about the situation where I have seen the job description? I've submitted everything through their corporate, you know, Taleo thing, um, and and their screener is calling me, and I know that they're and and really all they're trying to do is can you string sentences together that makes sense, that match with with the resume? What's the game there? How do I how do I get past them? Easy. So here's the, I call this the single best question to ask on any interview. And okay. you'll, you'll see why in a second. You know how most interviews start off with them doing, tell me about yourself. And you mm -hmm. do. And then you play yeah. interview jujitsu for a while. They throw a, a hook at you. You block it. They throw yeah. another back and forth for some period of time. Then they say, so do you have any questions for us? You say, tell me about the job. They do that. You go, sounds great, terrific, we'll get back to you. That's a typical interview. Here's a yeah. different model. They call you up out of the blue. Hi, I'm uh, Susan so-and-so from such and such company. Uh, is this a convenient time to speak? Uh, Susan, that'd be great. Before we get started, can I just ask you a question? You know, 
I, I vaguely recall the position that I had applied for, but I just would like to get refreshed on it. Could you tell me about the job as you see it and what I can do to help? So that puts the same thing as the job description in front of the interview. Gotcha. So it's fresh in your mind, it's fresh in their mind. And you get that information at the beginning when you can actually use it. Gotcha. Because otherwise, if you get it at the end, all you've been doing is flapping your gums about things that may not relate to what matters to them. Right. And even if you if you remember the job description, minor miracle if you do, but let's say you do for a second, from the time they posted it, from the time they got it approved in the institution to the time they called you, they may have tweaked it in a couple of different ways. And that mm -hmm. job description hasn't been changed. Right. So this gets you the freshest information possible at the beginning of the interview. So again, you can talk about what you've done that matters to them and not just talk about what you've done. That should get you past the screener. Okay. And, and the so, only trick is at the end, if they say, so do you have any questions for us? Obviously, you can't say, tell me about the job. Right. So, so the question is. Might be if you're talking to an HR screener. And if you're getting an evening call, it probably isn't. It's probably from the department. Okay. You might you might just uh, say, you know, let's say you hire me and I come on board and uh, what would you expect me to do in the first 30, 60, 90 days? You know, what what sort of work would you have me do over that period of time? So that's the opening question. So you get a sense of what their expectations are of you, 30, 60, 90. And here's the fun one that you follow up with. So I've gotten to the one year mark. And imagine for a second, I haven't just done a good job. I've done a spectacular job. Yeah, and it's time for, to give me my review. What would I have accomplished during that first year that would cause you to tell me what a spectacular job I've done? Now, you'll have an opportunity to hear whether they're being reasonable or unreasonable. Okay. Because yeah. if they say insane things, you can pause for a second to yourself and go, okay, I'm glad I found out about that now. <laughs> <laughs> and laugh to yourself about, oh man, that was that sounded so good until I got to that, and, yeah, and then boy, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, I, I remember years ago I was working with a guy who uh, I'd known him professionally. He was a client of mine for a long time. He changed jobs without me, and he calls me up and goes, "Jeff, I made a terrible mistake." Uh, and what happened, Marty? I took this position, I for, forget, I didn't get a clear enough picture of what I was stepping into. So he's a project manager, a program, uh, program manager at that time. And he says, I took over a project where 80% of the money was spent, but only 20% of the work was done. I'm the yeah. full guy. Yeah. So I walked in and they just handed me my samurai sword to fall on. Right. Yeah. So that's an easy way to play it. But you have to practice doing that instinctively uh, when you ask that question that I suggested at the beginning. Yep. It has to be a reflex for you. Yeah. And you have to practice it so it sounds natural for yourself. See, my way of languaging it is, is always, hey, thanks so much for calling. And if you got the referral from a recruiter, you know, I spoke with Jeff Altman about the job and he gave me a brief description, but I want to get your take on the role. Could you tell me about the job as you see it and what I can do to help? Now, I say that naturally because I've said it, said it about oh, 10, 15,000 times. Yeah. You have to say it in your way just as naturally. Because remember, part of why you get hired is not just simply because of what you know, but the degree to which you inspire confidence that you're the solution to a need. And that's all right. about gut feeling. Right. They call it fit. <laughs> Do you smell what I smell? <laughs> yeah, BS. Yeah, right. it, it, it's the subtlety of, of how you inspire confidence that you're the solution to a need. Gotcha. How am I doing so far? No, you're doing awesome. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the... 
Thanks for the pep talk. It's been great. Pep talk. I gave you. I gave you data. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real data. I know. No, it's been fantastic. No, it's been great. My notes are a little messy. I'm like looking at. I'm looking. What did I say? I'm like, yeah, bad. Okay. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the replay of this. I'm glad it was recorded. Um, it has been another, recorded. Yeah. There was another question that I had earlier, just a little bit ago. That's an ad. If you want to, yeah, good. Okay. Um, so, so one of the things you were talking about was um, was when you when you ask at the beginning what the job description is, or or how do you, you know, tell me tell me about the job um, uh, as you see it, and what can I do to help? The great thing about that is is that it also gives you insight into um, what of the required things are really required. Um, so, uh, and and I was I was reading a, a a piece, and I think it was on Medium. It may have been on LinkedIn, but it was some uh, another friend recommended somebody, and it was someone who had been been a recruiter, and and it was this great. It, it was like the five lies that um, that job hunters um, you know believe, um, and but but that was that was one one key point was was if you meet fifty percent of what they say the required things are, submit for it because because the truth is, is that they're looking for Superman and Batman all rolled into one. Um, if you're Superman, the, you, you've got a good chance of getting in there um, or at least getting, getting, having an opportunity to communicate how you can fit in um, because, you know, maybe you don't have all the gadgets, but you got super strength. So, um, you know, you can, you can kind of work those out together, but, but asking that question um, at, from the onset, gives you gives you insight into the things that really do matter um, for that specific position. So um, so I, I, I just want that it was it was just a comment to go along with the things that you had, you had said about uh, about asking that question and why it is important to ask it at the, at the front, because it gives you that even if even if you've seen the job description, if I'm standing there looking at it, um, that still doesn't tell me what they are looking for. Right. Um, uh, from, you know, what are, what are the things that, you know, make sure that these things are ticked off. Yeah, we said we want everything, but what are the things they absolutely positively must have? Um, I need to hear those so I can tell you whether, yeah, I got those or I don't have those, or, you know, let's not waste any more of our time. If that's the most important thing is that I live in DC. Um, it doesn't matter what my skill set is. I'm not going to come. Um, it was right out of college and I had, uh, uh, I was applying for a job, um, that, I, the, the interview took four hours. This guy was so incredibly thorough. Um, I mean, to the point of, I mean, to insanity. Um, but, but we got down to the end and he said, um, cause he kept saying, you know, and if you have an office visit and this is what's going to happen. And it, you know, if you, if you do that, if, if whatever. And so do you have any questions? I said, yeah. Can I have an office visit? <laughs> <laughs> It was funny because he was erasing a boy. He had a whiteboard that he had been been writing stuff on, and he was there erasing that, just waiting for my question. I could kind of see him, you know, kind of kind of out of the uh, like off the side of his face, and I saw this little smirk go up on his face. <laughs> he knew he was stuck. He he was it was either, you know, he either had to he either had to had to come up with with some BS about it, it wasn't up to him when I already knew that it was, um, you know, or he was going to have to answer the question honestly, and he. Uh, he said, yes, you can. <laughs> so. <laughs> and what he could have done after that is before the interview, call up and say, position's been filled, don't want to waste your time, and push you off sure, that way could. and get himself off he the could. hook. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But it was he, he's a great he's a great guy, and I did end up working for him, and so it was a uh, it was really funny. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm in here for four hours. The only question is, is Please tell me that I somehow earned the opportunity to have an office visit, which is the next piece of this. Uh, and he was, I mean, you want to talk about head games? So I graduated from college. My uh, my sister had graduated a little bit before that. And for her graduation pre present from, I guess, from her master's, actually, um, she uh, we, we went on a trip to Hawaii. And I'm in Hawaii. So, like, you know, the time difference between Dallas or, and, and Hawaii is like six hours, seven hours, something like that. And so it's like eight o'clock in the morning in Dallas when he wants to call and talk about, so would you be willing to go to Detroit? 
that was always the place I wanted to move to. Detroit, Detroit has been always. first on my list. Uh, it's been Detroit, Newark, New Jersey, and yep. uh, actually Newark isn't that bad anymore. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, Detroit has always been at the top of my list of places I want to move to. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, and it was the type of thing where he was going to fly me out there, and you know, I was like, well, I need to see it first, and uh, I don't. Up in Texas, uh, we got no winter clothes, you know, and uh, so we're going to need some. And I don't even know how much that's going to cost, or how much we're going to need, or how many layers, or any of that. So, uh, but it was, but it was a head game to see if we would go because everybody that I talked to and interviewed with them was like, "Yep, yeah, he asked me the same question." And you know, his team was in Dallas. <laughs> so, anyway, funny guy. <laughs>